Hello organizing gals. Today we're going to talk about organizing the laundry. The laundry is really important. There's a few centers in the home that are just critical to run well. The laundry, the kitchen, your papers. Uh, those are things that just need to run like clockwork and you need to try to create some decisions and some habits so that like for me, Monday rolls around, that's my laundry day. So I don't have to say to myself, do I feel like doing laundry? No, I just, laundry day happens on Monday. And so try to do that for yourself, is decide what day of the week you're gonna do laundry. If you're a working mom, you might wanna do a load in the morning, a load at night. If you're a stay-at-home mom, maybe you can just blitz it out in two days. Um, if you have a ton of kids, really consider getting two washers and two dryers. My mom has 11 kids and that's what she does. She has two washers, two dryers, and she can get her laundry done in one day because she has practically a laundromat at her house. So with uh, the laundry room um, in the Organize Your Joy workbook, there is page 90 and 91. It tells you how to streamline your laundry and make it an efficient system that's fantastic. So read those pages and I'll also tell you a bunch of tips. So now real quick, the laundry room is an amazing room to help build your children. Your children need to move mountains in their life and you have a mountain for them to move, which is your laundry. I wanna tell you a quick story about one of my sons when he was a little boy, um, he was in charge of folding the laundry and we had a table in our laundry room and I would throw about eight batches of laundry on that table and then it was his job to fold it. And so I would come in and check his work and there was always something a little off. Like one time I had washed all the laundry, he folded it all supposedly, and then I looked in all the dirty clothes baskets and they were all completely full again. And it turned out he had taken all the clean clothes and just put them in the dirty clothes and said, mom, I'm done. <laughs> so I, I said, no, 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 no. You need to finish, finish and learn how to be a finisher. And so I would say, um, then he was doing the laundry and we had no dish towels. And I was like, where are the dish towels? I know I had some. Well, he had hidden them under the stairs in the laundry room. And finally, after a few months, I found them. And so this kept happening. It happened seven times that I know of. And so I didn't know what to do. I mean, if this child doesn't learn how to work, how to finish and how to tell the truth, we're, he's not going to have a successful life. And so I said, be a finisher. And then I thought, well, maybe I need to say it louder. Be a finisher. And then I learned from Charlotte Mason, one of my favorite uh, educators from the 1800s. She said, your children only learn one tenth of what you teach them. You need to teach it in 10 different ways if it's important to you. So for me, teaching my children to finish has been one of the most important things. And so I thought, what are, what's another way I could teach him this? Can you think of that with your children? Are there experiences that you can give them? Are there stories that you can tell them? So I thought of the story of David and Goliath. And I asked him, you know, when Goliath, when he was hit with the slingshot, was Goliath dead? You know, we don't know. But when David chopped off Goliath's head and held it up to the Philistines, we know Goliath was dead. And so I said, chop off the head in that laundry room. So when I come and check your work, it is done. There isn't like any question that that is done. It is finished. So anyway, I hope that gives you some food for thought. When my children were about two, three, four years old, their job was unload the dishwasher, we put the dishes low, and their job was also to fold in the laundry little rags with me. They could put the soap in, they could push the button, and they loved it. They felt so important, and it took a ton of patience for me to help them learn how to fold little rags. But now I don't fold laundry anymore. They fold it, they put it away, and you know, you can train your children either easy hard or hard easy. And with laundry, I raised my children hard easy. I did the hard training when they were young, and now I get to have the easy results now that they're old, 
and they can actually do laundry. It's awesome. So I, now the I Can Do It organizing system is the acronym that you'll want to use to organize your laundry room. You want to make that room a functional clutter-free space so that your family can do laundry. So step one is imagine. And imagine what you want your laundry room to look like. Get a photo or a object that just kind of inspires you and maybe hang up a picture. Um, you know, maybe listen to podcast while you're doing laundry. Um, one of my favorites is called Blinkist and it's um, audiobooks that are in 15 minutes. So they've taken a 200 page book and they take it down to 15 minutes. And so I can read book after book after book and it's really fun. So the most effective place to do laundry is actually in the laundry room. And most people are doing the laundry room in their living room, on their master bed, and that is not an efficient place because you're moving all the laundry, twice at least, and you're actually, you know, it's not getting finished, so it's people are coming in and they're seeing it, it's a mess. And if you can just create a functional laundry room system in your laundry room, you will process laundry way faster and it, it will be way better. So step two is create motivation. One concept that I love is the salami principle, which is if you imagine a piece of salami cut into maybe eight pieces, and you know, when you think about organizing your laundry room, you might feel overwhelmed, but if you just say, you know what, there's eight steps in this I can do an organizing system. I'm just gonna do the first four steps. I'm gonna do the thinking phase today. It's not going to look any different, but I'm going to go through the thinking steps so that when Saturday comes, I can just blitz out my system. So that is a fantastic way to do it. With the salami principle, you just start with the first piece of salami. Imagine. Second piece, create motivation. Third, assess. Fourth, note down regions. And then maybe on Saturday you finish, determine containers, organize, inscribe, which means label, and train to maintain. So. Think about the salami principle. You don't have to do the whole organizing project all in one day. So uh, and then the next concept is assess. Assess the piles that are currently in the laundry room and just write a two column list and just try to write down piles and why they exist. And then just don't touch the piles, just say there's a pile by the door, there's a pile of laundry um, by the washing machine, there's uh, there's some some stuff to mend, you know, and then right on the other column why why the piles are there It's like oh everyone's dumping their dirty clothes basket right here. Maybe I need to put a basket right there so really look at why Things are happening and then work with your family's habits. I mean just look at You know what they have a habit of doing this so I could probably they, they are throwing trash on this little table, so I could put a trash can right there. So then step number four is note down regions, and that's where you put all your like items with like items in your laundry room. So you, here are some different region ideas, and I have more ideas in the book, but you have um, clean clothes, uh, folding area. You have the dirty clothes area. You have a laundry tools box. You have a, maybe a sewing area if you have a gigantic laundry room. Um, an ironing area. You could hang up an ironing board on the back of a door. Um, and maybe, oh, one thing that works fantastic is we have, everybody gets a pan, and this is your laundry pan, and we fold all the clothes right into these pans, and then after school everybody goes and puts away their pan. And this is amazing. My mom does this with her 11 children. It works awesome. So, so that's the regions. Okay, now we have finished the four thinking steps. Now we need to move on to the four action steps. So step one is determine containers. So in your laundry room, you don't just need shelves and containers. You also maybe need some hooks and a rod to hang up any wet clothes on hangers. And um, what I want to tell you, when I moved into my last house, I had these gorgeous cupboards in my laundry room. And I told my husband, I don't want those cupboards. I want three open shelves 
that I can have the dish pans in and then we can just fold into them and I can even have containers for light bulbs and electronic cords and I just I don't want it to be a beautiful room I just want it to be functional so I can just have a room that takes the pressure off of the house and I can put things away easily and he was he was really like, no, 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 I want this to look pretty. And I said, you know, I'm doing the laundry, so please let me have it my way. And he obliged me. And then we took those cupboards and we popped them in our kitchen because they matched the kitchen. And it was a great compromise. So um, try to, you know, work with your husband. But really, your laundry room needs to function because it's a major processing center. It's not the room in your house that's... The designer room where all your company is coming to see how how beautiful your house is so um, now step six is organize now the key to organizing is to stay in the space you're organizing so you get five containers and those five containers to remember the acronym it's toads and you get five containers for the speed sorting toads system so you have a trash and then these four boxes, other room box, action box, donation box, and storage box. And you just speed sort into those boxes. You don't put any of them away until you're done speed sorting into all those boxes. Make sure to have a donation box in your laundry room so that if there's ever clothes that you have a hole in them or something, you can donate that. And my thrift uh, store, it's Desert Industries, they take even clothes that have a hole in them and they make them into 35,000 pound bells of fabric and they ship them off somewhere and they shred them into mattresses so you can recycle clothing and um, and then all the clothes that are in good shape they just send those to any country that needs them and then step seven is inscribe that means you need to label all your containers and I once was in the laundry room where the lady did not she had pans for each of the seven or eight kids, but no one had a name. So the mom was the only one that could fold things and know, okay, this is this child, this is this child, this is this child. So make sure you write the names on each of the bins so that other people can fold laundry and put it away for you. Uh, the last step is train to maintain. So this uh, is, you just train your family, you bring them in for a little short discussion and say, hey, I organized the laundry room and this is the new system. So this is where you need to put the clean clothes, this is where the dirty clothes go. And I need your guys' help in this room because uh, I don't need to do this alone and you need the skills when you go to college. So uh, I wanna read you one quick little letter from um, this is from my sister-in-law's cousin. She says, by the way, please pass on my thanks to your sister-in-law who did that Organize Your Joy website. Uh, after rereading through her website the last week, I put some of the systems into place. My laundry has never been such an organized routine and I don't feel overwhelmed with mounds of laundry on the couch. The kids each have a clean clothes basket on a shelf in the laundry room and every morning they have to check it to see if there are clothes they need to put away. Anyway, I've just barely started and I am so excited to train my kids to maintain the home and train myself. Keeping house was not my mom's forte. She has other gifts though. Anyway, thanks. Love you. Mwah. So this girl was able to create a laundry system that worked much better and you know, I want you to have more time to play games and work on your hobbies and not spend as much time doing laundry. Let's get your laundry room organized. This is Crystal Meltrum with OrganizeYourJoy.com.